Hey everyone, um, I'm Stefan with the Rapolo Libraries and I'm glad to be here with you for a story time at home. I've never done one of these before, so let's see what happens. I think it's going to be fun. Um, I've been missing you guys. I'm glad that we get to be together here, even if we don't get to be together at the library. So like at the library, let's begin our story times with a deep breath. So do you remember how to do this? We put our hands here on our chest. We're gonna fill up our lungs with air like this. And we're gonna let out the air like this. Nice one. Let's do another one, ready? So hands on your chest, deep breath in. And let it out. So I love taking deep breaths because they help me focus. They help me calm down and they feel good. They're very good for grown-ups too. I've been taking a lot of deep breaths lately. So let's do one more. And this time, we're gonna use our imagination. So I've been using my imagination a lot at home too. And our imagination helps us pretend. So we're gonna be dragons. Can you pretend that you have some sharp dragon claws on your hands like this? How about in your mouth? Do you have some sharp dragon teeth? How would a tongue, do you have a long dragon tongue in there? <laughs> All right, good job dragons. What happens when a dragon takes a deep breath? That's right, they breathe out some fire. So let's take a deep breath dragons and breathe some fire out. Are you ready? Okay, deep breath in. Hold it. Now breathe out some fire dragons. <laughs> Great job. All right, let's read a book now. So we calmed ourselves down with some deep breaths and now we will read a book. In Colorado, we live by the mountains, right? And you've been seeing them more than ever. Probably they look beautiful right now. And so tempting, we, I can't go to the mountains, but I can read a book about the mountains, which is why I chose to read this book today. It's called Hiking Day, and I have permission to read it by Simon and Scholster Publishing. A woman named Anne Rockwell wrote this book, and her daughter, Lizzie Rockwell, drew the pictures, which are so good. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Hiking Day, so look at that. Ew, right? That looks like Colorado, the mountains. Maybe. Today, my mother, my father, and I are going to climb Hickory Hill. That's the mountain I see from my window. It looks like a mountain to me, but everyone calls it Hickory Hill. I put on my sturdy sneakers, I find my floppy hat, and I fill my She's getting ready, right? The ride from our house to Hickory Hill takes about 20 minutes. As we drive, I see fewer and fewer houses, and I see more and more tall trees. As soon as we park the car, we check the map to see which trail to follow. Trails are like paths cut through the woods. We choose the red one because it's my favorite color. So these, this family is going to hike that trail right here. The minute we step onto the trail, we are surrounded by tall trees. We can't see sky. The ground is covered with leaves and ferns. It looks like the inside of my mother's terrarium. It is so quiet. I can hear my sneakers crunch in the ground. As we climb higher up Hickory Hill, a fat toad leaps in front of us. Ribbit, ribbit, he says. I kneel down to look at him. His colors match the floor of the woods and the tree bark. And that, some of you kids will know that's called camouflage. Hey, says my father, where's the red trail marker? Uh-oh, says mom, where can it be? Are we lost, I wonder? We look at the tree trunks around us 
And then we notice a prickly porcupine slowly climbing up a tree. As she moves up the trunk, I see a red mark appear. I found it, I cry. There it is, the trail marker. We begin hiking again. I hear a loud tap, 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 tap. It sounds like someone's using a hammer. A little chipmunk puts a hickory nut in her mouth and scurries through the leaves. Getting ready for winter, my father says. The tap, tap, tap gets louder. My mother points up and I see a woodpecker making a hole in a tree. He's looking for insects hiding inside, she tells me. He uses his beak to make the hole bigger and to find good things to eat. Bugs, yuck, says dad and I. We see some yellow mushrooms and some red berries growing on a bush, but the beautiful friendly toad is gone. Maybe he decided to hike down Hickory Hill instead of hiking up with us. Soon we stop for a drink. All of a sudden, I know someone is looking at me. I slowly turn to see a deer with wide antlers. He leaps away so fast that nobody sees him but me. Whoa, that girl had a pretty cool thing happen to her, right? A secret deer. The more we walk, the more I notice the trees are not so tall. The ground is rockier. Now I can see bits of blue sky and even an airplane flying across the sky. Suddenly the ground below my feet isn't the woodland floor. It's a big, flat rock. We're at the summit, my father tells me. The top of Hickory Hill. We did it, I say. We sit down on the sunny, warm rock. And guess who jumps up to be with us? Ribbit, ribbit. The friendly, fat, whoop, toad. The end. And what do you say at the end of the book? You say at the end, I just said it. <laughs> okay. And sometimes you drop the book after you read it. I, I, was, I was thinking about what else I could do since I can't go camping. And I thought maybe I could make a fort. Have you made a fort at home yet? I'm going to show you how. So a fort is sort of like a tent that you sleep in when you camp. I'm making my fort using some materials I have at home. Okay? So let's see. I move my computer. I need some chairs to make my fort. So I have four chairs. Here they are. One, two, three, and four. You could use two chairs, you could use three chairs to make your fort. Next I need a blanket. So here is my blanket. I'm gonna spread it out over the chairs like that. And when I make a fort, I like to use some other things. I use some heavy things for my fort. So this is a milk jug full of water. And I have some laundry detergent right here. And I have some super heavy weights. I put the heavy things on the edge of the blankets like this. And this helps the blankets stay put. All right, here's my fort. And I have my backpack. So my backpack I'm going to take into my fort. You ready? In my backpack I have a book to read and some paper. I'm gonna do some drawing, make some art in my fort. So let me pack up my bag. Put on my backpack. I'm gonna go in this fort for a long time. You could do this at home. <laughs> okay, here are some friends I'm bringing with me into my fort. All right, they're gonna go in first. 
Here they go. <laughs> okay. Friends in the fort. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay. That's four friends in the fort. Now I'm going to go into the fort, and that will be five in the fort. Here I go. You ready? Put this back up here. Oh my, it's so fun in the fort. It's so cool in the fort. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go in that fort for a long time. So I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys. I'm gonna go play in my fort. So to say goodbye, I think I will use my flannels from Storytime. Here they are. So we say goodbye in a lot of different ways to these guys. Do you remember these? <laughs> Maybe some of you have seen them. The first animal we'll say goodbye to is this alligator. And how we'll say goodbye to him is we'll say, See you later, alligator. Can you say that? See you later, alligator. All right, let's put him. Let's put up a different type of reptile. That last one was an alligator. This one is a crocodile. So let's say, see in a while, crocodile. Can you say that? In a while, crocodile. Let's see, here's a funny one. This is a monkey called a baboon. Let's say bye to him. Ready? We'll say, see you soon, baboon. See you soon, baboon. Can you hear that these make rhymes? Baboon, soon. Okay, let's do another one. This guy speaks Spanish. It's an iguana. So in Spanish, we can say, Hasta mañana, iguana. Hasta mañana, iguana. See you tomorrow, iguana. All right, let's say by him. Woo. Okay, let's do one more. This is my favorite one. This person has a really good job. An important job right now, right? He's a barista. See right here? He's making us a latte. So we'll say another Spanish thing. We'll say, hasta la vista, barista. Can you say that? Hasta la vista, barista. All right. Well, I will say goodbye to you guys. That's the end of my story time at home. And I'm going to go play in my fort. Grownups, um, make sure to check out our zero to five page on the Arapaho Lib Library's website. And there's a lot of awesome activities to do from home with your kids. And keep staying tuned for the story times at home. Bye.